pray that you have had an amazing week and you had a good 4th of July and enjoyed family and friends and food and fireworks. And I know that uh, me and my family, we just had an amazing time on Thursday. We got together and Anytime uh, me and my family get together, it's, uh, you never know, it's a big crowd for one because it's my sons and daughters and now my grandkids and it's my nieces and my nephews and you never know who might show up, uh, but they're all welcome, amen, and we just have a good time. Uh, I will say my grandkids are getting to that age now uh, that they think that they would love to set off fireworks, right? But they just don't know all of the right and correct ways to do it and actually how dangerous it can be. So, you know, moms and dads uh, are trying to teach them, uh, you know, how to do that. And uh, we uh, got started pretty early that night doing some uh, daytime fireworks around probably 5, 30, 6 o'clock, somewhere in there, maybe a little later. Uh, but I had a grandson. I was standing in the middle of the driveway, and all of our family had lawn chairs, and we had our, our uh, you know, our fruit and ice cream, and we were all eating, and I was hanging out with grandkids standing there getting ready to go light something myself so that the grandkids could enjoy it. But I had a seven-year, well, he's not quite seven yet, getting ready to turn seven this month. And he goes out, and man, he's all gung-ho, right? He'd been lighting these fireworks, but he goes out in the middle of the road, and he sets one sideways. Uh, when I didn't actually, nobody knew that at the time, but he lit that thing, and it comes shooting right back at the crowd uh, and directly at me. It hits me right in the leg and burns my shorts. Uh, I, am, I am perfectly fine, but it's like, uh, you, you know, you ever seen me shout for joy on a Sunday night or a Sunday morning? I was shouting in the middle of that uh, driveway. Woo! <laughs> but it got my attention real quick. Amen. And, uh, but I pray everybody was safe and we did have a, a good time. We're going to go to God's Word today. And He has placed, uh, 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 it's His Word, not my Word. He's placed the word upon my heart, and it, it comes from him today. And so before we get started, we're going to ask him to just have his way in this servant and in our lives that we are, our ears would be open to hear and obey what he's calling us to do. Amen. Let's do that together today before we study God's word. God, you're an amazing God, and I love you so very much. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come into your house and into your presence and to worship you and now to take time to study your word and lord we know god that i'm not capable but you are so i ask you right now in the name of jesus to anoint these words that come directly from your throne and might they minister to our hearts in a powerful and special way today that lord we would be changed not leave here as we came, but be changed in the name of Jesus to do your work and to do your will for your glory and for your honor. Now we give you all the praise for your worthy in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Well, uh, it's always an honor for me to share God's word with you. I don't always feel worthy to do that because I am a sinner, but by the grace of God. Amen. And so this morning as I was studying over the last few days and... Uh, some things going on in my life and God has just been speaking to me uh, uh, again like I say over the last few days and I really felt like it's a simple title uh, it's not it's you know we can try to put a title to our sermons and you know come up with something really catchy and and, and really good but basically God just wanted me to share with you today about one thing and it's about compassion compassion and there's a lot that goes in to that word compassion. And matter of fact, the meaning of compassion, and I looked at several different meanings and uh, different words that would describe it, but actually like the meaning of compassion is like feeling sorrow for someone or being sympathetic to someone, being concerned about the other's welfare. You can go as far as charity or generosity and be in compassion. Mercy, showing mercy, be compassionate to someone. So compassion is one of those things that 
for myself, sometimes it is kind of hard to understand or how to do. Okay, now I love people. I love God and I love people and I, I want to share God's love to them. But sometimes trying to be compassionate and seeing somebody that has something going on in their lives, whether it's uh, need a healing upon their body or they're in a tough financial situation or they're needing to find a job. And, and it's hard to show compassion sometimes because maybe I have not been through that situation. You understand what I'm saying? And so to have compassion for someone that maybe has cancer or been diagnosed with cancer and says, hey, you only have two months to live. And yeah, I, oh man, I'm so sorry. I'm going to pray for you. And you know, I want God to really touch you. And you know, that really hurts me that you're facing this. But true compassion is hard to really come by because we're not in their shoes. We don't know exactly what it is that they are facing at that moment because it is such a tough and traumatic thing. And I know that there are some times where I've been able to have compassion and genuine, just downright compassion because I know what that person feels. And so when we have compassion, it's one of those things when you've been through it, then you can have true compassion and know exactly and you can reach out to them. There may be even some ways that you can use to help them and be totally compassionate toward them and help them out. And as I was studying this word and thinking a little bit about it, I, and I've told you my story uh, several times, but um, I had a young boy in my children's church, uh, it's probably been almost 10, 12 years ago now. And his mother, uh, and it was two boys, and uh, they, his parents were, their parents were recently divorced, and then their mother came down with a rare cancer, and I mean within like six months, she passed away. And these two boys had been in my children's church for six or seven years at that point, And the two boys were getting to be, one was a teenager, probably 13 or so years old. And the other one was probably nine at the time. And they came to me and they were hurting. They were hurting. I mean, this is a tragedy to you lose your mom at this age in your life. And you're just like, oh man, my heart goes out. My heart goes out. But you know, what I was able to do in that moment was I was able to truly reach out to them with compassion because at the age of 12, my mom went on to be with the Lord. And so I knew what that hurt was. And I knew how bad deep down inside your hurt was to lose a mom and your life just seemed like at moments was almost over. But see, I knew what them two boys were going through because I had walked it. And I could have compassion for them. I could wrap my arms around them and say, hey, God loves you and He'll be there with you because guess what? I experienced God wrapping His arms around me and helping me during that time and I know it's real. And so I could share those things with them and it was a true compassion that I had for them and had an understanding of really what they're going through. But here we, so many times, we don't have that. So many times we haven't been through what some other people are going through and we're needing to reach out to them with compassion because God calls us to that. Amen? So today we're going to look at what God says about compassion. And I'm going to read a lot of scriptures today, so if you can follow along... That's awesome. I would love for you to follow along with me. But we're going to start, first of all, in Romans chapter 5, verse number 6. Romans chapter 5, verse number 6. And it says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Since we have not been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? See, you understand here when we look back at verse number 8, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The compassion that God has for us as sinners. God sent his only son to die up on the cross. That's how much compassion he has for you and me. He wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us in a special way. And if, you know, when you, when you look back at things in the Bible, you go all the way back to Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen? And He created man and woman, Adam and Eve. And I mean, I read back there and He looks at it and He said, that is good. Amen? And what he's seen is like, yes, that is good. So his creation, he loved from the very beginning. He loved his creation. He looked at it and said, yes, look at that. That's awesome. I love it. And I love reading God's Word because I can look back at that and I can just see God and He's like, He, 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 he put the stars in the sky. He, he separated the water, man. He put the animals in there and everything. And He looked at it and said, that is good. But I'm telling you, he looked at man and woman and he said, that is good. And he wanted, he wanted to have a relationship with us from the very beginning. He created something special in that garden for us. Amen? I believe that with all of my heart. He, he, he created that. He looked, he placed them in there in that blue, beautiful place and said, just don't do this. Just don't eat of that tree. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just don't eat of that. It's, then look at how great this is. This is so awesome. And then what happens? And man, I'm telling you, as a kid, I got so mad at Adam and Eve. <laughs> you know, they had it all. You know, they had it going on. And, but sin came into this earth, right? But God had a plan from the very beginning. And that plan was He wanted to show compassion to us. And you know, I get amazed a lot of times when I'm reading, and listen, I'm not, a, I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm telling you, there are a whole lot more intelligent men sitting in this congregation that could be right here this morning sharing God's Word with you. But I'm just telling you, I read the, the Old Testament a lot of times and I'm just, I get confused reading it and seeing some of the stuff. But I'm like, you know, the Israelites and the, and the, and the things they did, you know? Have, they were so hot and cold, sometimes they'd be on fire for God and love God, and then all of a sudden, and, and you know, and we all know God, you know, at times had mercy, but then there were times where He came, remember? Noah and the ark, He said, I'm done with this. And He wipes it out. Amen? But He's still a God that had a plan, and a plan of compassion for you and me, that He would send His only Son, Jesus, to die upon the cross for our sins and for our salvation. Amen? That's a compassionate God. A compassionate God. There's not anyone in this room that I think would lay down their own Son for someone else. But our God did that for us. And he showed compassion on each and every one of us because he is a God of love and mercy and compassion. So in the very beginning, he looked at you and said, you are good. Matter of fact, he has so much compassion that he's waiting that everyone would come to know him as, as their personal Savior. That's the compassion that he has right now. We all know that we're living in the last days. How many of you agree with me? We are living in the last days. God is coming back. I promise you, God is coming back. But He's such a loving, compassionate, merciful God that He's waiting that everyone would come into a relationship with Him. That's how much He loves me and you. He loves us. And so we're going to talk here in just a minute about compassion and, and who we should have compassion for and those different things. But God has compassion for each and every one of us. Now I want us to go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. And I told you we're going to read a lot of scripture today. 
But I want to go to Mark chapter 1, verse number 40, starting at verse number 40. And I want you to look at this with me. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus had compassion upon this man. The man walks up to Jesus and says, Jesus, Jesus, make me clean. And at that very moment, Jesus, well, I mean, it was just all the time with Jesus. Wasn't it just that moment? But it just happened to be at that moment the man asked and said, Hey, I want to be clean. And it says Jesus was compassionate. He looked and seen that man and said, He needs a touch. Amen? He seen him where he was at at that very moment. And this man come before him and said, I want to be clean. And Jesus looked at him and said, Oh my goodness, that man must be hurting. You know, like I say, we don't sometimes walk through things that are people going that people are going through. Jesus was, you know, faced a lot of obstacles in his life. Amen. And there was this sincere compassion in his heart when he seen this man. He went and said, "Be clean in the name of Jesus." Amen. And he rose up and he was clean because Jesus is a man of compassion. He walked upon this earth. He knows what we go through every single day of our life. And He is compassionate. I want you to hear this in Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 and verse number 11. It says, Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and His disciples and a large crowd went along with Him. As He approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of His mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, His cry went out to her, and He said, His heart went out to her, and He said, Don't cry. Then he went, up, went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. It says, when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Jesus is a compassionate God. Amen? He seen what she was going through. She was crying. He could see the hurt and know what was going on. And see, Jesus is that, that He knows what we are going through. He knows what we are facing. Because He's an all-knowing God. Amen? So He knows every situation that we face. And Jesus looked down and said, don't cry. Don't cry. I can almost picture it as like he wanted to wipe her tears because he's seen the hurt. That was so bad right there at that very moment. He, he, he could feel it. He just knew what she was going through. And he said, please don't cry. And what does he do? <laughs> he walks over and takes care of it, amen? He says, get up and walk. <laughs> and he got up and walked. And he handed the boy back to his mother. Here's a situation where this mom was, she's a widow, she's lost her husband. What kind of situation? And that's what I started this out. You know, we don't know the hurt. And in this particular woman, what the hurt she was going through, some of us don't even begin to understand or know or recognize. She lost her husband, right? And here she is in this situation where her son has just died and she's crying uncontrollably, uncontrollably and she's hurting. How many of you know today that in our society and in, in our community right here, there are hurting people all around us? 
And God's going to speak to us here in just a moment. But there are hurting people. We don't know what they're going through. Some of them, we don't know what they're going through. Some of them, we do. But we don't know what that feels like. But see, Jesus was so compassionate everywhere he went. These are just a couple stories about Jesus and what he did. Everywhere he went, he was reaching out to the hurting. He was reaching out to the hurting. That was a part of his ministry. He talked about how great his God was. He shared with the, the good news of Jesus or the good news of God and his greatness and who he was. But see, he was compassionate. He walked and everywhere he looked, everywhere he went, he wanted to try and help somebody. He seen hurting people and he reached out to them. There are hurting people all around us. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. It's about compassion. God had compassion for us that he would send his only son to die upon the cross for our sins. Jesus went, a, went all around ministering to those that were hurting Everywhere he went, he looked for a place to be able to help someone that was hurting. Now, in our own lives, one of the things that I think God is calling us to today, and, and in, through his word today, he's going to explain to us a little bit more here in a minute. But for us, as the word calls us to be Christ-like, we need to have compassion to those around us that are hurting. Amen? So let's look at God's Word. In Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, verse number 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Here he is going around. Here he is again going around everywhere he could, healing diseases and sicknesses. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So here we see Jesus again. He's going out about, healing those, and then he comes across this crowd where compassion comes upon him and he looks at them and says, oh my goodness, this is like sheep without a shepherd. Now listen to this next part in verse number 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. This is where we come in. God looked at the disciples and said, Hey, look at all these people. I can't touch them all. Look at how many hurting people there are. Look at all those people that need my touch. Look at all those people around you that are hurting. He says, but the harvest is huge. Right? But there's not enough workers. He was saying there's not enough people that are reaching out to the hurting and to the lost. We need workers. That's where we come in. Amen? We need to have compassion for the lost. We need to have compassion for the hurting. Because it's all around us. And guess what? Jesus sits at the right hand side of the Father. He intercedes for us every single day. And He knows. He looks down. He's been right there. He's been right here where we're at. He's done it. He's seen the hurting. And He looks down. And He sees all the hurting around us. And He's called us to be workers in the harvest field. He's, been, he's called us to be like Jesus. Jesus looked at them, looked at that crowd, and He had compassion for those that were hurting. Do we have compassion for those all around us that are hurting? Because Jesus did. Amen? And at that very moment, He called out to His disciples. He says, you need to call upon the Lord for workers 
in the harvest field. You need to call upon the Lord for those to have compassion upon all of these. Look out there. Jesus seen all of those that were hurting and he, was, he had a compassion for those that were hurting. So he's called us to reach out to the hurting people of this world and to have compassion for one another. Matter of fact, listen to this in Galatians 6, 2. Galatians verse or chapter 6, verse number 2. And it says, Carry each other's burdens. In this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. He's called us to be compassionate and to love one another. But it goes as far to say, Carry one another's burdens. Amen? Not only to look and say, Oh, I'll pray for you this week. But no, he says to carry one another's burdens. Now that's a pretty tall order, amen? But I feel like that even right here in our congregation, we have a lot of people that are hurting and go through a lot of different things. And again, back to what I said earlier, some, some of them we've not walked it, we don't know what it's like. But we need to be willing to reach out to them and go to them and wrap your arms around them and say, what is it that I can do for you? My heart goes out to you. I want to help you. I want to bear that burden that you have right now in the name of Jesus. We prayed for those up here today that are carrying heavy burdens. Come on, somebody, in the name of Jesus, we need to be willing to bind with them and help carry the burdens that they have in their lives. You know, it can feel lonely to be facing something difficult at work or difficult at home. It can be tough. There's people sitting here today that got situations that they're facing at home, at work, financially, whatever it might be. And it can be a lonely place. I've been there. We've all been there. And then sometimes you walk away and somebody might even say, well, I'm praying for you. Well, that's good, but, you know, keep praying, please. But do they truly want to bear your burdens and help you? And that's a place where compassion comes in. It's hard. I understand that. It's hard. It may take sacrifice on our part to help somebody else that needs help. Amen? It's not always easy. But God's calling us to bear one another's burdens and be there for them when they face tough and difficult things in their life. That's what being Christ-like is like. Because Jesus went everywhere reaching out to the hurting. Just love thinking about the stories of Jesus and everywhere He went, looking for every opportunity that He could to minister to someone. Is that what we do? I would like to think that we look around us and everywhere we go. And I want to share with you here in, in just a moment a little bit more about compassion because I have compassion for a lot of different people. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But I want you to, I want you to Hear this next part. Why is it important to have compassion? Okay? We're going to look at this first and then we're going to go into some areas where we can have compassion on different kinds of people. But listen to this right here. And it's found in Matthew. Matthew 25, starting at verse number... I'm going to start at verse number 31. Told you I was going to do a lot of reading this morning. But I want to share with you why it is important. This, this right here, I want you, as we're reading this, I want you to understand why is, it, why is it important for me to show compassion to those around me. So let's read, starting in verse number 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will set on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people on 
people one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry. Now listen to this part. Listen to this real close. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Compassion. Remember, we're talking about compassion. I was in prison and you came to visit me. I was sick and you looked after me. That's compassion. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did you see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king replied, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Amen? Compassion. Looked upon those that needed clothing. Looked upon those that were sick. Reached out to those that were in prison. Compassion. In the name of Jesus. Let's read on. Then he said to those on his left, Depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Amen? Why is it important to show compassion? It's our eternity. Amen? Those that reached out to the hurting have eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen? Those that look and step away, where will they spend eternity? Amen? It's the compassion that we need to have. We need to be willing to reach out to the hurting. We need to be willing for those that are hungry to help them. We need to be willing to those that are in prison and hurting, reach out to them and minister to them and share the good news of Jesus Christ to them. Amen? And show them compassion, the compassion that God has for you and me, the compassion that Jesus has for you and me. That is the same compassion that we need for one another. It's not always an easy thing. I understand that. One of the things that I struggle with, and maybe some of you struggle with it as well, my heart goes out to the homeless of our city and of our nation. My heart goes out. So as I stand before you and I, I preach to myself about compassion, and, and I drive this city, and, and I don't know if you've noticed it, but I mean, it's, it, it's, it's got worse. I mean, it's, I mean it, 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 it's sad. I mean, it's, I mean, it's everywhere I go all throughout the day. I can wake up first thing in the morning, and there are people with backpacks, and they're just moving from their place to place and going down to watered gardens and getting food and then going back to their little homes that they have in the woods and different things for sleep and stuff like that. And so... You know, listen to me. My heart goes out to those that don't have a home to go to, don't have a bed to sleep in tonight. They don't have food to eat. I look at them and I'm like, man, I, 
I've not walked in those shoes. I've never been homeless before in my life. I don't know what that would be like. But let's just think about it for just a moment this morning about the compassion that we need to have for those around us. And, and then let's talk, you know, I, I sometimes, you, you know, we, we live in a, a real world, amen? And it's hard for us to go and to be compassionate to every single one of them and reach out to them and give them shoes and clothes. And I have plenty of that that I could give them. And the more I think about it as I'm preaching this message today and to myself, I need to do a better job of gathering up extra clothes. I did that last week. I cleaned out a closet. Somebody gave me some clothes. I'm like, I, man, I could go out to where they're at and if they needed it, give them those clothes. And, you know, and I've tried to do that over the years. And then you hear the stories, okay? And this is the hard thing about living a Christian life and doing what God's called us to do because then you hear people say, well, that person over there is really not homeless. Has anybody heard that story before? Where that they've stood on the corner with the sign and then ask him for money and then at the end of the day at 3, 30, 4 o'clock they see them walking around the corner and getting in a brand new car. I've heard them stories. You know, so, you know, this is the deal. God calls us to have compassion upon everyone, right? And sometimes when we hear different stories and things like that, we fail to show compassion just because we think it this way. Are you understanding me this morning? It's hard. I, I, I get that. You know, but we need to be a people that when God places it upon our heart, man, if you see something like that and there's just something inside you that, oh man, I just feel so sorry. If, if God places it in your heart to do something special for them, go do it. Be compassionate to them. Show compassion to them. You don't know where they're at. You don't know what they're going through. But God has called us to be compassionate people and love and help and bear people's burdens. And, and it's a hard thing. I, I get and understand that. So one of the things for me is, uh, now I wrote down some things for myself personally that I think people that we really need to be compassionate for. And I want you to hear this first one. We need to have compassion for the lost. We just heard right there in God's Word where the lost end up. Amen? He said, for those that don't do for me, this is what? This is where they'll spend eternity. Now, let me tell you something in, in saying that. There are some really good people out there that do all of those things and are compassionate. They give money to the homeless. They give money to the poor. They feed the hungry. They give clothes to those that don't have them. There's plenty of those people out there, but they've never had a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen? And there still are going to be a day. No matter how compassionate they were, you see what I'm saying? If they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, their eternity is in hell. Amen? But for us to spend eternal life with Him, He wants us to have a close relationship with Him and He wants us to have compassion for the lost because we need to look at these verses and say, look at that. Look where the lost are going. Any of you in this room have a lost family member? Any of you in this room have lost friends? You need to have compassion. You need to have compassion. Where can we find that deep compassion down within us that says, man, they're lost. They're going to go to hell. I don't want them to go to hell. And we need to have a compassion that would say, I'm going to do everything in my power to share the love of Jesus Christ with them. We need to be a light into this lost and dying world and we need to show compassion to those that are lost because they need to know Jesus. Amen? So we need to show compassion to the lost. And you know, I've shared the story, you know, I, I just, I don't, 
take my Bible and beat people over the head with it. I want to share the good news of Jesus Christ. But, you know, there's some times where I just let my light shine for Jesus. And I think that's just a really good thing. Amen? Just letting your light shine for Jesus. And I told you the story of the guy that I started the new job out there at FedEx Freight. And he's been a little ornery to me, you know. He just did some things and just just being ornery he just likes to pick on me you know he's older than I am and he just like you know just loved to give me a hard time you know but you know what <laughs> the more that I've been there <laughs> the more that I've just let my light shine and let just it roll off there were times where it was hard for me to let it roll off my back the things he did to me <laughs> it was hard it was very hard but I continued to say God help me in this situation and I'm telling you, it's starting to turn. I can see it turning. The last week and a half, two weeks, this man has just every day come up to me and just been smiling and laughing and asking me this and asking me that. And it's, it's a turn. Didn't happen overnight. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I, d I don't know that I had the greatest compassion. I'm just being honest with you and transparent today. Amen. Can I be that with you today? <laughs> There wasn't always compassion for that man there, you know? But I asked God to help me and continually, and then all of a sudden, God just began to do the work. You know, to have compassion, ask God to help you. Just ask God in situations where it's hard to show compassion to someone, you know? It's not easy sometimes. Like I said, we don't know why, don't know what they're going through sometimes, but then other times it's just like, well, that's a hard person to show compassion to. Understand what I'm saying? Maybe it's the homeless that you have a hard time with. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They're dirty. They, you know, just... Is God calling us to compassion? Ask Him to help you show compassion no matter what it might be. Now, listen to me, and I'm getting ready to close. But here's some more things, more people, because our family members... We need to have compassion for our family members. Amen? Because some of the same things. They may not know Jesus for one, so we have to have compassion for them. They may be going through something health-wise, and we need to show compassion. Maybe they have an addiction, and we need to show compassion to them. And I've been through situations where my family members, and I've, you know, and it... It's hard. I've got a son that has battled cancer for 10 years. I cannot imagine living every single day like he has for the last 10 years. It's hard because I don't walk in his shoes, but I see what he's had to go through, and I'm like, man, that has got to be difficult. And this is a man that is strong in the faith, and he just trusts God, and he, t and he said this from day one. He's told his mom, he said, God's will be done. I'm not worried about this cancer. I'm not worried about dying tomorrow, which his mom didn't want to hear. But he said, God's will be done in my life. But he walks daily in that. And for me, you know, I have compassion for him. I love him with all of my heart and I don't want him. I would rather do it myself. You've been there. Got a family member or a wife or a husband. Lord, why are they having to go through it? Sometimes it's hard to show compassion and know. But we have family members we need to show compassion to. We talked about the loss we need to show compassion to. The hurting people that are out there, no matter what it might be, addictions, maybe it's someone that has lost a close friend or family member. We need to show compassion and ask God to bring comfort to them during the time of their hurt. But to be there. You know, you ever, like, you know, in ministry and things, and I've been around a lot of people that have lost loved ones, have lost a friend to death or a lost loved one, and so many times would have to go in their home and do funerals and do dinners and things. That's what we need to be doing. Amen? Reaching out to them, doing whatever, letting them know that our door is open 
for them to come if they need to talk or whatever it might be. That's just another part of being compassionate. Amen? No matter what it is that people are going through, we need to be willing. Pastor John, would you come this morning? I'm going to read one last scripture because I lean on this scripture in everything that I do. And as I was thinking, I need this to be able to show compassion. But it's found in Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do everything through Him who gives me the strength. One of my favorite scriptures, I lean on it all the time. Are you having a hard time showing compassion? You can do anything through Christ who gives you the strength. Amen? Maybe you're struggling in that area in some way in your life. Lean on the strength of God. Amen? And know and understand that God has a deep passion for you. He sent His only Son to die upon the cross for you. Jesus he sits at the right hand side of the Father. And I almost look at it sometimes because I love thinking about that. Sometimes when I'm praying, I'm just like, Jesus, you're sitting right there beside the Father. You're interceding for me. All I got to do is cry out to you and you're interceding for me. You're saying, God, look down upon Pastor Steve. He needs you today. And sometimes I look at it like almost Jesus, is, Jesus has tears in his eyes for me because he has so much compassion for me. Amen?